Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, Holy Ghost, Amen. One of the themes running through this epistle of St. John is that in this life, the struggle between the children of God and the children of this world, that is, the children of the devil, is nothing but an extension of that struggle between the powers of heaven and hell. And like all fundamentally, metaphysically essential struggles in which we become involved, for us, emotions will become inflamed. And consequently, because we do not do a good job often of our emotions, sins will be committed. So said as simply as possibly, yes, we must fight. And yes, we must fight against evil. And yes, we must hate evil. If we love good, we must hate evil. But we are weak and we are imperfect, and we're selfish, and in those battles, we can end up hating our enemy in a way that rather than vanquishing him, damages us. Said using the words of the saints, it can happen that in fighting against our enemies, we ourselves can inadvertently become the enemies of God because we inadvertently end up hating what God created. It might be, it might be a useful time right now, perhaps, to just go back and look at some of the basic, basic notions that all of us know about hatred and nevertheless are difficult to keep in mind in our day-to-day lives. So we know that there is a sin of hatred, and we know that there is an emotion of hatred. And there is an important distinction between those two. So how do we describe the emotion of hatred? It's a little bit difficult to describe. We've all feels like. We can consider it as anger, perhaps. But it's anger with a certain tinge of desire to hurt someone, avoid someone, or to get revenge on someone because they are evil. Usually it's because they've been evil towards us, but because they're evil. Here's the important thing to remember about emotions. They come and they go. And really their appropriate use is to be informative. What makes me mad? What doesn't make me mad? What should make me mad? What should not make me mad? Important self-knowledge. And nevertheless, and that's all it is. We tend to make our emotions our reality and they are not. They're going to happen, and they're pretty much going to happen as they happen, and that's the case. Virtue is a choice, and sin is a choice. So let's not worry so much about the emotion of hatred. It's going to come, and very often it will be tinged with a certain selfishness because we will tend to hate people or things or events or circumstances because they're not good for us. Not necessarily because they're evil, just we don't like the way that they're treating us. This is the work of a lifetime, and, and it is something that God knows we need to do, and he will give us the graces and the helps that we need. Let us cease to speak about the emotion of hatred. Let us speak now about the sin. So how can we characterize this this sin of hatred? We can think of it as the emotion of hatred, but carried on to an unreasonable degree. So 
what does that mean? Well, notice we said unreasonable. And again, I want to insist, there are certain things we must hate. There's something wrong with us if we do not hate evil. And there's something wrong with us if our hatred of evil makes us unreasonable and self-damaging. So this sin of hatred, it's the emotion, yes, but when it becomes a choice that we know, it's just not good for us. Usually, so everybody wants to always analyze their hatred. Is it, is it good or bad? Life gets complicated, yeah? But usually in our guts, we know. We just know. There is something about my hatred here in this circumstances toward, in, towards this person that is damaging to me. That's something worth listening to. So the sin of hatred, it's the emotion, but in some way, it's an unreasonable choice. So what do we mean when we say it's an unreasonable choice? You know, it's very, it's possible. that we find ourselves very angry. And we don't quite know how we got there. There was no choice involved. Just somebody said something, and this thing that this person always says, and before I know it, I'm a conscious choice that I could stop and take a breath. I could walk away. I could think of something different. I could try to think of our Lord or our Lady. Nobody does that, but just... The saints do that, but fine, okay, never mind. I could take a breath. I could walk away. I'm not going to. I know this is wrong, I'm not, but I'm not going to stop. There's the sin right there. I know it's wrong. I'm going to do it. And we can fool ourselves, yeah, because there, there's certainly such a thing as a holy evil. It is what our Lord exhibited in the temple. It is the enmity that was placed between Our Lady and Satan from all eternity. That is a holy hatred. But it certainly takes a purity of intention that if we're honest with ourselves, we probably don't have. And there's no denying that when our hatred is intrinsically disordered, we're just doing it to get back or because we're not willing to rein ourselves in, it's intrinsically and radically evil. Our Lord tells us, I tell you, love your enemies. If you do not forgive them, your heavenly Father will not forgive you your transgressions. This is a commandment of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the fundamental reason why we are forbidden why it is deeply and gravely disordered to hate our enemies is because our Lord died for them. And he told us, love these people that I died for. So, oftentimes we can get trapped in this gray area. We know we have emotions, and perhaps we, we start to understand that, but did I commit the sin? How do we tell the difference between the sin and the emotion? And it can be difficult, but again, I want to insist, it just comes down to this. Was there a moment when we said, uh, I should take a breath? It would be better if I just stepped away for a second. If we don't do that, we are guaranteed there's the sin. For the rest, we're weak, we're wounded, we have all kinds of baggage and history and damage and drama, and God knows. We do the best we can. But in those, in those moments when we make the choice to make our point and to get carried away, to punish this evildoer, and it just makes us feel so good and strong, even though it might be too much, there's the sin. And I want to insist... Hatred can be a very good thing, actually. The intention is to make us stronger in the face of evil. And the problem is the modern world today insists that hatred is one of these so-called negative emotions. 
and it's bad and you cannot hate and you have to love everybody, etc. If you if you love everybody, you don't you don't love anybody. There are some things we must love and there are some things we must hate and God gave us in our constitution hatred to make us stronger in the face of evil. You and I, we're the ones who tend to muddy the waters with it, but hatred in and of itself is not an evil thing. It's a very powerful force that we can we can easily misuse and we need to be careful about it. But I want to insist, God made us good and hatred is one of the emotions that he instilled into human nature so just a few principles with hatred the first one hating good people it's always wrong you can't hate good people because why do we do it because they make us look bad they make us feel bad we think that they're they're trying to be better than we are if, if good people did not offend or cause us evil, then if we find that we have this, this tendency of hatred towards them, that's, that's really about us. We, we're not going to speak about this anymore. It's pretty intuitive. You can't hate somebody who's good and who hasn't done anything to you just because they're good and haven't done anything to you. We all know this. So we leave that, we leave that behind. The more, the more complicated question is, how, how do we virtuously deal with hatred in regard to people who have harmed us, in regard to our enemies? Well, the first principle is we must always, always make the distinction between the work of God's hands, the soul that God meant to create from all eternity, and that God created so that this soul could be with him in heaven to worship him forever in heaven. And that's a fact. And there's also the fact that sometimes these souls sin and they don't behave properly and they can damage us. So it's this this distinction between the work of God's hands and whatever can flow from our weak human nature. So what God did can never be hated. The evil that men do should be hated, but not the men. So obviously, how do we, how do we stand in the face of this? These evils that are done to us and that we can very reasonably feel hatred towards. Obviously, our Lord on the cross is our example if we're sitting in this room, it means we call ourselves Christians. It means we call ourselves followers of Christ. Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. And he prayed and he offered the last drop of his blood for those who persecuted him. It's not easy. It's the work of a lifetime. Nevertheless, it is our work. So on the very practical level, this is really ABC kindergarten. How do, we, how do we at least give ourselves some assurance that, okay, I don't know what's an emotion, what's a choice, I don't know, but give me the minimum that can help to orient me. First, we can never refuse to pray for anybody. And we can never refuse to give an alms to anybody. And we can never refuse, just as simple as it is, we, we don't have any other obligations. We only have one obligation to, to do what's right in front of us. And I see this person in a grave danger. And nothing else is pulling on my obligations. Even if he's my enemy, we cannot refuse him. We can never refuse someone who needs grave help. Assuming that we don't have other obligations, it can get complicated. But if we're inclined to say, I'm not going to pray for this person, or I'm not going to help this person no matter what happens, that is the sin of hatred. We cannot either deprive our enemies of 
those simple basic courtesies common in whatever society we live. There's a certain social code at the seminary. There's a certain social code in your home. There's a certain social code in your workplace. Everywhere we are, there are certain things that they're, they're just expected to return a hello, how are you, good morning, whatever it is. We can't deprive our enemies of those most basic, basic, simple things. A parakeet can say good morning. A parakeet can say thank you. We can at least do that, even with our enemies. We have to be polite. This is the minimum. So, beyond that, well, look, we, it's clear, huh? We have circles of intimacy. Our, 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 our loved ones, our siblings, our parents, these, these trusted people. We're going to show them marks of respect and marks of trust and marks of confidence and marks of love that we're not going to show somebody on the street, and that's obvious. So our enemies are not do those. We don't have to open our hearts to our enemies. We don't have to... We don't have to share our, our greatest vulnerabilities with our enemies. It's just silly. That belongs to our friends. That belongs to those who love us intimately and deeply and that we love intimately and deeply. We don't have to give those to our friends or to our enemies. Those belong to our deepest friends. Then we have this outer circle of friends that however that works out, fine, fine. We still, we must give our enemies the, the outward signs of friendship. We cannot refuse them aid in the gravest need. And we must, we can't refuse to pray for them. Beyond that, we do the best we can. But I remind you, our ideal is our Lord on the cross. Because... We're, we're, we're going to come to, a, to an end here. This isn't about doing the minimum so that, well, do I have to confess a sin of hatred or not? This is about striving to be perfect. This is about striving to enter into the mind and heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and frankly, everything that we've just said, it really is kindergarten. And, and we all need to pay attention to it because sometimes the, the wounds that people can inflict on us, they run deep. And, and everything that we just said, it's the minimum. But it is kindergarten. And it is the kind of thinking that befits slaves. It is not the thinking that behooves those who have entered into the freedom of the children of God who can love as they love, who can not love as they not love. This is what we are after. In today's epistle, St. John refers to our Lord's laying down his life for us. And it's his concluding argument. He says, well, you know, you got to love people and you can't hate. No theological argument. There's no moral argument. His conclusion is, in this, We've known the charity of God. He laid down his life for us. So we ought to lay down our life for the brethren. That's it. That's it. We are striving to become like our Lord Jesus Christ. It's the work of a lifetime, huh? So in the meantime, what do we do? When we find ourselves moved to hatred that we think might be unreasonable, Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it is. We have to meditate on the life of our Lord. Huh? We, we, everybody nods their head. I, I stand up here and I see it. When I say our Lord is the model, everybody nods their heads. But nobody's reading the gospel. No one's reading biographies of our Lord. No one's thinking about our Lord during the day. How can he possibly be our model if we're not thinking about him through the day. We must meditate on him. Learn of me. I am meek and I am humble of heart. 
All the times that he returned, good for evil, love for hatred, magnanimity for injustice. It's not going to happen unless we're doing this fairly regularly. And the last one, which everybody's going to nod their head at, and nobody's going to do, you want to ensure you're fighting against your tendency towards unjust and disordered hatred, pray and do penance for your enemies. That is the mind of Christ. That is the heart of Christ. Pray and do penance for your enemies. And if it seems impossible to do, ask Our Lady to obtain for you the graces that you need because I promise you this. I promise you this. Ultimately, we might make it into heaven, yeah? But if we die with hatred in our, in our hearts, we will spend a long, 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 long time, best case scenario, a long time in purgatory. Pray and do penance for your enemies. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.